All right, hey everyone, John Beard here with your final video for the class, being accompanied by our undergraduate lab assistant, Josh. And so we are going to do a CRISPR-Cas9 injection, and the first step is preparing the needle. So we have our GD1 glass capillaries, and Josh is going to go ahead and put some M9 solution in the needle. So usually this is where your CRISPR-Cas9 DNA mix goes in when you're doing an actual injection. Since we're just using M9, we can just dip the pipette in the M9 solution and it'll go into the bottom of the needle. There it is. Um, if you're using a CRISPR-Cas9 DNA mix, you just pipette. Do you know the volume you pipette? Is it one microliter of the DNA? One microliter into the needle. Okay. And so this machine is going to actually pull our glass capillary into a fine point needle. So we have our heat already set. You can see the coil there, which is going to heat up to allow the capillary to be pulled. So the needle is being pulled from either side while it's being heated in the middle to pull it into the right shape. And there it goes. And you can see now the fine tip at the end of the needle. And so you can set the machine to different heat levels to get whatever tip that you need for your procedure. Let me get a good look at this needle real quick. If it'll focus, we'll see. Okay, there you go, now you can see it. And you see the liquid is not at the tip yet, so Josh is gonna have to fling the needle downward several times in order to get the liquid to go all the way down to the tip of the needle. And so after we're done flinging the needle, we're going to center it under the light in the microscope just to get it ready for the injection. Okay, so in order to focus the microscope on the needle, we're going to prepare our agarose slide. So you can see the slide has a little bit of agarose. Here, if we put it on the table, I can focus better. There's a, a little bit of agarose in the middle of the slide. That's that square there. And we're going to add this mineral oil to the agarose, this white light mineral oil. We're going to add this to the agarose square so that way when we put our worms on it, they're going to stick to the agarose, but they won't dry out as fast if we have some mineral oil on the agarose slide. So we're just going to tilt it until it covers the entire agro square on the slide. That looks pretty good. And so we're injecting our worms with M9, which is just kind of a test solution to show you guys. But you always have M9 on the slide as well. And so when we actually pick the worms, we're going to put them into the M9 to keep them from drying out at all uh, while we just pick worms. So you can pick several worms, five to ten worms even and just have them sit in the M9 for a while before transferring them to the agarose, where the mineral oil prevents them from drying out as fast, but they still dry out over time in the oil compared to the M9. Okay, so now that we have our slide ready with the mineral oil and the M9, we can get it over the microscope. And there's still no worms on the slide yet, but we're just using it to focus on the needle first. That way, once we do have worms, we can quickly inject them before they dry out. And so, uh, we'll be able to see the what's going on in the microscope through the monitor once we get closer into focus. Okay, so the other thing we have to do while we're focusing on the microscope is we're gonna use our eyelash toothpick. So this is a toothpick with a synthetic eyelash glued to the end. And we're gonna use that just to gently stroke the end of the needle. And that's gonna make sure that the very fine aperture at the end of the needle is opened up so that way we can inject our worms. So there's our tool of use. So we have our slide of worms here. These are N2 worms, so these are a wild type strain. And so this was this plate was chunked just to give the example micro injection. And so he's using our 
eyelash toothpick to hook the worms on the skinning scope. And so whenever he hooks a worm, he puts it in the M9. And then if we were doing a micro injection, he might hook, again, anywhere between five to 10 worms, depending on how fast the injection is. If you're faster at injections, you can do more worms with a single, a single round of it. And so the worms in this case that are currently on the agro slide would be P0. If you remember our parental worms, these are the worms that we're injecting the CRISPR-Cas9 into. And then each of these P0 worms would get their own dish to lay the F1 generation. So you can actually see the worm right there on his eyelash as he puts it from the M9 into the agaros. He's going to try to line it up so that way it has a flat body, which will make it easier to inject under our other microscope. Okay, so we have our worm. And now the microscope is already focused on the needle, so when he slides the agro slide under the light, it should be in frame with the needle. And so when you see it on your side, Josh, it looks good, you can swap to channel five so we can see it on the screen. Okay. So he starts on low power, of course, and then he, after he's focused on low power, he goes to high power. And so the way our setup here works is on channel one, the light goes through the slide into the eyepiece where Josh can see it. And if we change to channel five, it redirects the light into our camera here. And so that camera is going to transmit what the, micros what the microscope sees to our monitor here. We have our NIS element program, which allows us to preview the camera. So this software was actually kind of difficult to set up. It took a a lot of tech support emails back and forth because it was oddly difficult just to install and get it ready to go. Okay, so you ready? So you swap channel five so we can see what you see. And here it is. So you can see the worm and you can see the gonads right there. And so again, those big circles are the nuclei which are visible in the gonads. You can see the needle over to the side. And so we're not actually moving the slide or the needle at this point. What Josh is going to move is the, the stand itself. So he's got his, his fingers on the knobs there. And this whole stand will slide. And so that's the easiest way to control it. If you move the needle at this point to try to put it into the worm, you're going to break the needle because you're going to move it too quickly. So the needle is already at the same level as the worm. And we have the gonads at the right focus. And he's now entering the worm the needle and he's in so I don't know if it'll come up if it'll be visible for you guys uh, or through the through the camera but sometimes you can actually see the liquid go into the gonad and travel through and that's a good indicator that you had a good micro injection so the way that we are Injecting the liquid is through our foot pedal here on the table. You can kind of see Josh's foot on it right there. And so that is connected to our uh, nitrogen air tank. And so that pushes air through our tubing, which connects to the back of our needle. And the air then pushes the liquid into the worm. Okay, and just to show you guys one more time, we're gonna inject the same worm. And so when you're injecting the worm, you're targeting either the anterior or posterior arms of the gonad. So we started with the posterior arm, now we've moved over to the anterior arm. And I think you can actually see, uh, maybe you can see some liquid already in the gonad from the first injection, but there you can see the liquid really clearly flow that time. So this worm has now been injected with our DNA. Of course, in this case, it's just M9 solution. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this slide back over to the scanning microscope. And if you have multiple worms, you can just drop a drop of M9 onto all of them to keep them from drying out, and then you can pick each one and put them in their own 
Petri dish. And so each successful P0 worm that you inject will have its own dish. So you don't have any crossover between worms that you've injected. And once you've done that, you have completed your micro injection and you can move on to using PCR to verify whether or not the CRISPR-Cas9 mix actually did its job and added the mutation. And so here he is just picking that worm and adding it to the dish.